I thank the organizers of the evening for inviting me over here to talk about anti-Semitism. I think after listening to a French accent and a Palestinian accent, it's the right choice to take somebody with a German accent. But still, I think <laughs> it was the wrong choice, after all, because a panel which is so much unisono is something which is less constructive. You needed somebody here to talk for the Israeli right wing, somebody like Hayetzny, who has the same uh, German accent and will tear apart everybody coming from the left side talking about anti-Semitism and why, because of anti-Semitism, we have the total right to stay here and uh, get rid of those who are uh, living in this country or in this place for such a long uh, time. But since I am here, I'm going to make not a book review, but uh, some remarks relating to the books, to the book, which I find uh, maybe constructive in a discussion uh, over the question of anti-Semitism from the point of view of uh, Israeli. First of all, I was very thankful in the name of Willem for putting in such a, a prominent role in the book. Uh, Willem is somebody with whom we can start and we should start any discussion about anti-Semitism. He was the one who uh, really introduced the term anti-Semitism and we have always to ask a question, what was wrong with anything that was before the term anti-Semitism? What was wrong with the uh, Judenfeindschaft, with the hatred of the Jews and Judenfresser and uh, other uh, ways of describing the phenomenon? So he introduced something which w intended to be modern. He departed from the standpoint of a religious community in his book that he published in the year 1879. He proclaimed uh, himself as somebody uh, arguing from the point of view of a non-confessional, of non-religious uh, uh, citizen, somebody who is acquainted with the development of natural sciences, who learned to know something about race and racism. And from this point of view, he tried to reorganize the war against the Jews. It has to be... Uh, uh, it has to be known also that uh, in his later, his later years, he uh, became an anti-anti-Semite because he found out that he made a big mistake with the crucial, uh, uh, the crucial argument that he had for anti-Semitism. He thought that anti-Semitism will be the real and final solution for the so-called social question. As long as you talk about the social question and you look for a solution, he thought that the other solutions were not uh, efficient enough and his solution was, in a simplistic way, anti-Semitism. The Jews have to be blamed and are to be blamed and this is where you start to, uh, to solve all the real problems of the world. The problem for us and from our point of view is mainly the problem of definition. How do we define anti-Semitism? It was already difficult for Willemar to explain exactly where the difference is between his approach to anti-Semitism and the approach of others to Jew hatred. And even in his own, uh, uh, in his own organization, the Antisemitenliga, the other people who uh, worked together with him didn't, didn't understand the difference and they went along with the old, uh, with the old images of Jew hatred, calling it only anti-Semitism. So it is also for us uh, decisive to find out what the real definition of anti-Semitism is. Now, since we have the IHRA definition of anti-Semitism, we are, we are usually very comfortable because we have some definition. The problem is, if you read the definition and you take it seriously, you don't see where the border is between anti-Semitism and non-anti-Semitism. And there I'll 
also pick uh, on uh, one example given in the book of uh, uh, Rabbi Neuberger, the example of Tottenham Hotspurs. Uh, you need also for the definition of anti-Semitism a kind of var. Since I don't believe that everybody knows exactly what I refer to, var <laughs> is the video assistant referee. So we need a video assistant referee in order to find out where do we cross the border between anti-Semitism and non-anti-Semitism. If the question is what it is and what it is not, we need a kind of a var, and the var was not invented yet. And what is even worse, the new mechanism uh, provided by the IHRA uh, definition is so flexible that uh, the VAR in this field seems to be impossible. So we have a real problem and uh, we have to try as historians, as I do it as an historian, to explain where what we are talking about when we talk about anti-Semitism, and as I said, I do it with a German accent, so I took the, do it mainly from the German point of view. In the German discourse of anti-Semitism, there is a clear reference to three stages or levels of uh, anti-Semitism. First of all, you have the prejudice. You uh, accept the fact that anti-Semitism is a prejudice and not a body of uh, knowledge. Then, having uh, this prejudice in your mind that doesn't say that uh, you have to do anything with it unless you are on the second level where the social distance is created. Explaining it, so if I decide that my daughter is not going to marry a Jew, there I have the social distance that is implementing something of my uh, prejudice in my social life. But this is not the most extreme level of uh, uh, anti-Semitism. Anti-Semitism has a third level, and the third level is the political problem, program, and the intent to implement the program. And this may go as far as a final solution uh, that we know from uh, the history of the first, first half of the 20th century. So when we are talking about anti-Semitism, we have to know whether we are talking about the first, the second, or the third level. And the danger is, of course, when we come to the third level. Uh, but, of course, our attention has to be uh, caught by also uh, anti-Semitism on the second and on the first level. And now, in the discussion about anti-Semitism, we are not only discussing the uh, <coughs> level on which anti-Semitism is practiced or uh, um, referred to, but we are also talking about different kinds of anti-Semitism. Until the year 45, 1945, we had the easy approach to anti-Semitism. We knew what anti-Semitism is, or we believed that we know what anti-Semitism is, this is what we call until today the classical anti-Semitism. If uh, somebody is murdering somebody else because he is a Jew, then we are uh, on the safe ground. We know this is anti-Semitism. After the Second World War, a new ingredient was introduced, which is the secondary anti-Semitism, which is mainly uh, the denial or all kinds of denial of the Holocaust. This is something that you couldn't have found before 1945, because there was no uh, Holocaust before. Now we have to uh, argue against people who deny the Holocaust, and we have also to take into the account that there is a reason for using this kind of an argument, uh, the denial of the Holocaust. It is based on an anti-Semitic approach or the needs of uh, people who are anti-Semitic. And there is the third ingredient, or the third thought, thought, uh, uh, source of anti-Semitism, which has become, in Germany, the main, uh, the main object of discussion, which is the Israel-related anti-Semitism. Now, again, here we really need a VAR, and we don't 
have a vow for this uh, definition of Israeli-related anti-Semitism. Yisrael Betzogana Antisemitismus, they call it. Because if you want, and especially if you belong to the Ministry of Strategic Affairs of the Israeli government, then of course nearly, nearly everything that is related to Israel could be considered anti-Semitic, especially if it's not to the liking of the Israeli government. So we have, of course, to find out to what kind of anti-Semitism we refer, and we have to be aware of the fact that the third ingredient, the Israeli-related anti-Semitism, opens a field for all kinds of approaches to anti-Semitism, which blur the real discussion about anti-Semitism. Anti-Semitism is also a tool which is instrumentalized in a political discussion. We have uh, listened to my two predecessors, and I can only agree. It is a political issue. People instrumentalize anti-Semitism in order to uh, achieve other goals. We want to fight the left wing, and this is one way of fighting the left wing, and this is very acute now in the uh, scene in the United Kingdom or we try to attack the Muslims or the Arabs. So we use anti-Semitism as an argument in order to fight either the left-wing politics, left-wing politics, or to fight Islam, not only the Islamist, but also the Islam. We have to be aware that it is nothing but a tool in a kind of a war and not an approach based on a scientific understanding of what really anti-Semitism is. And this is why in the German scene, the BDS became the main focus of fight against anti-Semitism. Even the German Bundestag uh, pinpointed on the BDS as the highlight of anti-Semitism because under Israeli pressure and under the pressure of others from within, uh, the need to attack mainly the Muslims in Germany, mainly the enemies of Israel, or the better, the enemies of the Netanyahu regime, uh, had to be attacked. And this is why uh, this decision that was taken by the German Bundestag against the BDS as an anti-Semitic, as the uh, utmost anti-Semitic uh, expression uh, uh, dealt with in uh, Germany. But it's not only Israel and the Israeli government that is instrumentalizing anti-Semitism in order to achieve its goals, which is mainly in the direction that was uh, hinted uh, by my predecessor. It is also the uh, Jewish communities outside Israel who join forces with the Israeli government in instrumentalizing anti-Semitism anti in order to fight other enemies. And in order to be on the safe side, I just quote uh, somebody who is a Jew, is a rabbi, is an American, or was, and uh, was discussing it about 20 years ago, and I think uh, what he said then is still actual today. He said, well, I have to deal with the question how Jews have used anti-Semitism as a force pro for preserving the community. If you don't have another force to preserve the Jewish community, then you turn to anti-Semitism to achieve this goal. And this explains, quote, the addiction to anti-Semitism among Jews living in the diaspora. And he goes on, as long as fighting anti-Semitism at the center of the agenda of Jews outside Israel, the Jewish community needs to exaggerate, exaggerate the power of the enemy, even to the state of paranoia. And uh, another remark, the organization which have been created to oppose anti-Semitism must almost inevitably emphasize its persistence. I was quoting uh, Rabbi uh, Arthur Herzberg, uh, who was talking for the American Jews. So he 
complements what I have said about the instrumentalization of the anti of anti-Semitism by the Israeli politics, by the Israeli uh, government, and by many Israelis. Now, we are have also to talk about a definition from another point of view, which is a point of view of statistics. How do we know how much anti-Semitism we have? How do we measure it? We have a lot of uh, public opinion polls. We have a lot of uh, details uh, collected by police in all uh, countries. The outcome is that at the end, you don't know how much anti-Semitism you are confronted with. Is it on the rise or is it on the decline? Uh, you refer to the FRA report, and at least one thing uh, is uh, quite obvious, that if you talk about anti-Semitism and if you make it an issue, of course, from the point of view of the subjective Jew, anti-Semitism must be on the rise. The danger is, and this is my last remark, the danger is, of course, that this will have this, dealing, this kind of dealing with the anti-Semitism, this kind of instrumentalizing of anti-Semitism, instrumentalization of anti-Semitism, will have a boomerang effect on the Jews themselves and on the cause for which we fight when we fight anti-Semitism. Because if the shepherd is crying too often that the wolf is around and you find out that it's not the real wolf, then when the wolf really comes, then nobody will join forces in order to fight the uh, wolf. If you turn a blind eye on the right wing, which is done very often, especially from the point of view of the Israeli government, then of course the blind right eye will achieve the opposite of what you intend when you want to find fight anti-Semitism. You will achieve the rise of anti-Semitism and a fight without <coughs> a real chance to overcome anti-Semitism. Thank you very much.